my co-authors Vivek Venugopalan, who is our GPU guy, and Michael Gehring, who will be introduced in the panel today. Uh, we three are from United Technologies Research Center, and uh, I am not sure how many of you are aware of the United Technologies Research Center, but it's the research wing for United Technologies, and I'll briefly go over what uh, United Technologies does. So here, uh, uh, I'll try to uh, show you three use cases, mostly focusing in building systems and aerospace industries. Uh, yeah, I'll give a brief overview of United Technologies and the research center that we have and the GPU infrastructure that we use and uh, the three use cases, one related to the jet engines and the other one uh, building systems and the third one uh, elevators. So uh, broadly grouping, U United Technologies has uh, two groups of uh, business units. The one uh, on the left, the one on the left is uh, mostly uh, building systems, and the one on the right is aerospace. So on the left, we have uh, United Technologies CCS, Climate Control and Security. Here it's mostly we build chillers, uh, HVAC systems, and in the security, we have uh, access control, uh, video surveillance, perimeter security, and things like that. Uh, under OTIS, we have elevators. We build elevators, escalators. And on the aerospace side, we have Pratt & Whitney jet engines uh, and United Technologies Aerospace Systems, which basically builds brakes and different critical components in the aircraft. And we also provide, uh, develop life support systems in International Space Station. Uh, so you can understand we have a lot of data, and uh, uh, we'll just briefly go over what we do with this uh, large volumes of data. So I mean, uh, there are four basic deep learning technologies which came up uh, maybe five, six years back. Uh, in the center, you see. Uh, Convolution neural nets, deep belief networks, autoencoders, and convolution autoencoders. Basically, we can address uh, both uh, supervised and some unsupervised learning. And uh, some of the applications that you can solve are anomaly detection, feature extraction. You can use them in controls, clustering, optimization, <laughs> classification, compression, and regression. So today, I'll uh, talk about three use cases uh, related to UTC business units. And uh, the work that I uh, showed today is something that we did uh, roughly two years back. And uh, uh, in 2013, we had an opportunity to work with uh, Dr. Jeff Hinton's student. Uh, and uh, at the time, we just looked for different use cases in the company. And uh, I, uh, some of the use cases are from uh, aerospace industries and building systems. But apart from that, in the last three years, we have been doing more work in additive manufacturing, and we have been successfully using deep learning in additive manufacturing, visual inspection, and uh, uh, physiological data analysis for designing better uh, user interfaces. Um, this is a, a slide that uh, Vivek has given me the, about what we have at UTRC. And we have like three servers with four Tesla GPUs. And the softwares that we basically use Initially, we started with the co code base that we got from Jeff Hinton's lab, but uh, right now we moved on to uh, Tiano, Keras, and uh, we are looking into TensorFlow. So uh, the first use case that I have is uh, sensor estimation on Pratt & Whitney jet engines. So the, the fast data set is a new box that uh, jet engines will be using, and they, they started using. And uh, before this, you used to have just seven samples from a mission, meaning from takeoff to landing, you just used to collect seven samples and try to analyze them. Now you have sample every second, and there are a lot of sensors on the board. And uh, I just showed you some 15 uh, different sensors here, but uh, uh, I had to remove the x -ax y axis uh, for some reasons, but yeah. Uh, so what I'm trying to do here is, given uh, this uh, engine speed or altitude or different flight parameters, can I predict what the fuel flow rate would be? And why is this important? I mean, uh, 
yeah, your model can predict the fuel flow rate. And if it is deviating a lot from what the engine is actually consuming, you can say that the engine health is degrading. Or say one of your sensor broke, the fuel flow sensor broke, and you can actually use this as a virtual sensor. So what we are doing here, uh, what I'm illustrating here is uh, we are actually building a deep auto encoder, and once we have a deep auto encoder on top of it, we stick a linear regression layer and do a fine tuning and use it for regression. So um, what you're seeing is a simple illustration on how it works. So here are some results on how the fuel flow estimation is. The blue is the actual fl fuel flow from a real sensor. And the red dotted line is what the deep auto encoder with a linear regression on top of it can actually predict. Uh, so here, uh, some of the sen input uh, sensors are engine speed, inlet temperature, pressure, oil temperature, altitude, and mock speed. So given this information, uh, the simple auto encoder can actually, with a uh, logic linear regression on top of it, can uh, actually do a pretty good job in fuel flow estimation. And uh, just go to give you more details, which you can find in the paper, we used a five-minute sliding window and uh, we extract these features and we just give the raw data without extracting any FFTs or any of, the, any of those kinds. A few more examples on how the reconstruct, uh, how, what's the prediction. So the blue is the original data from the real sensor and the red is the dotted, uh, is the one that comes out of the model. Uh, the third use case, um, as I said, uh, we also have a business unit which uh, uh, does the HVAC systems in large buildings. So the use case here is based on some uh, parameters like the outside air temperature, humidity, and things like that. Can I say, well, can I predict what's, what the chiller power consumption would be? So here, uh, uh, the top plot that you're seeing is uh, all the six different inputs that go into the model. And the output that I want to predict is the chiller power flow consumption. Here, the uh, uh, sampling rate is pretty, uh, I mean, it's f one sample every 15 seconds. Uh, so I took like two to three weeks of data for training this autoencoder, and again, on top of it, a, a logistic regression, and tested it on uh, four months of uh, data. And uh, so this, so, in our research center, we have this data as a standard data, benchmarking data, and we try to, any new algorithm that we use, we try to compare it as a benchmark. And if you see the results using discrete base net or continuous base net or structured learning on the base net or Koopman analysis, these are the RMS errors that we get. And using the deep learning approach, uh, we got a really good uh, result. And if you zoom in into the graphs, it's doing a pretty decent job uh, as far as predicting the chiller uh, power consumption is. So that's the second use case. And the third use case, it's more for fun and it's uh, actually like this use case where uh, uh, we took the cell phone. Uh, okay, the, just to give you some context, it is uh, addressing uh, Otis elevators. So you have these elevator doors which need a lot of maintenance because of the broken rollers and things like that. Uh, uh, so the, normally the technician goes there, tries to see what's happening just by hearing if it has any vibrations without tapping into the uh, system, uh, Otis control systems. So what we try to do here is if the technician has a smartphone, why don't he keep it on the floor of the cabin and take the ride and based on the sensors, I mean, uh, all of us know there are a lot of sensors on our smartphone. So here, uh, we actually used a Samsung Galaxy, and ha it has 16 different sensors. So we just recorded data from these sensors, and we actually took an anomaly detection approach. So we collected a lot of data from uh, healthy elevators, meaning where the doors are working fine, and uh, we learned a nominal model. And we tried to induce faults in the elevator doors and saw if you see any error in the reconstruction of the autoencoder. And the amount of reconstruction error would indicate how bad the uh, ma uh, maintenance issue is. So we tested on four different instances. Uh, one is a good cab door where you don't have any issues. And the second one is uh, 
there is some resistance in the door, the roller is broken and it's a, a severely damaged roller. In most of the cases you can actually hear, but the, one of the fault that we induced, which doesn't make any sound, is the resistance to the door. So we just wanted to see which sensors actually pick these faults. So we basically used an anomaly detection approach where we trained an autoencoder. And uh, when you use it in re uh, real time, if it has seen that kind of data, you will have very low reconstruction error. And if it sees anything anomalous, you have pretty high reconstruction error. So uh, this is the reconstruction error of some pretty uh, uh, good elevated doors. So yeah, the reconstruction error indicates how bad the fault is. So uh, we did that, and for our four instances, we were pretty much able to pick up all the faults on the elevated door. And uh, the, in the, the amount of reconstruction error actually indicated the severity of the fault. And it also was able to pick the cap door with resistance. And when we went back and saw which sensor is actually contributing, because you can see which sensors are not being reconstructed properly which indicate, uh, so we went back and saw which uh, sensors are not being reconstructed. And it's the magnetometer on the phone because the metal, uh, the elevator doors are metal. And the magnetometer actually picked the actual periodicity of the door. And when the door got struck, the magnetometer started giving you high reconstruction error. So you can also see what's the re, uh, how the uh, detection is being done or the analysis is being done. So yeah, I mean, all these uh, things are preliminary proof points, but uh, lately we have been uh, using the deep learning approaches in additive manufacturing with pretty good success, and visual inspection with pretty good success rate. So uh, I mean, our future work, uh, use it for detecting the right quality of the elevator and things like that. And th this plot actually shows you the reconstruction error of a good cab and moderate damage, severe damage, and a cab door with resistance. Yes, any questions?